My name is Jeremy. I'm 13 years old. I live in a small town in the south. Finding a job here is a huge problem. My dad used to work as a loader, despite having an academic degree. My mom has always been unemployed, but she has a lot to do anyway, as I have two little sisters. Our town is often called a ghost one. It's very grim here. There aren't many cars driving in the streets, and those few you see are just cheap pickup trucks. I think everyone living here would like to leave. I often ask my parents to move to a city. I dreamed of becoming an artist and exhibiting my works at the best galleries all over the world. Obviously, there's zero chance of achieving anything in our town, so all that was just a dream. There was a pastry shop next door to our house. It sold muffins that weren't really delicious. They were too sweet with very few raisins. I popped in there once when I worked as a mail carrier, and Uncle Alfred, the elderly shop owner, offered me a job there. He made this shop sound like a really great place to work. He promised to install air conditioning, make some repairs, and buy new baking equipment. So far, the place looked horrible, with flies often swarming at the window and the floor seemingly cleaned like once a month. Of course, I knew why he offered me the job. It had to do with taxes. Having a 12-year-old boy working for him would be really cost-effective. So, at the age of 12, I worked at both the pastry shop and post office. Every boy my age had to work. If you didn't, you'd be ridiculed. Things changed dramatically a month after I had turned 13. My dad went down with pneumonia. His condition was really bad, and the doctors didn't give us much hope. My mom was on pins and needles. Our dad was the sole breadwinner of the family, and if he got bedridden... The illness changed my dad significantly. I couldn't work because of that at all. My little sisters went to school, and mom didn't let them spend much time with dad. She didn't want the girls to see him dying. I talked to dad a lot. It was really important to me. However, he was no longer coherent and was struggling to express even a simple thought. Dad's condition was getting worse, and the doctors refused to take him to the hospital. They said they couldn't do anything to help him. It was a nightmare. When dad passed away, I swore to myself I would get on my feet and take care of my family. This is what I promised to my dad, even though in his final days he could barely comprehend what I was saying. I had no one else to count on but myself. I thought about begging in the streets, but people in our town just wouldn't donate. The only thing left to do was dropping out of school and working a lot more hours. I wished I had brothers, but I only had little sisters and mom looking after them. All the money was always spent on the girls. They got everything I never had. Toys, sweets, and attention. I asked Uncle Alfred to give me more work to do. I left my job at the post office and focused entirely on the pastry shop. I did all kinds of stuff, like cleaning the floors, baking, and serving customers. Uncle Alfred was very happy with me. Even though I was 13, I worked at least 10 hours a day and did things properly. My mom would literally beg me to bring home more food. Uncle Alfred was a kind old man, so he didn't mind that at all. I pampered my sisters with muffins, cakes, and donuts. Sometimes that was the only food we got. I would come back home from work late at night and go straight to bed so tomorrow could come sooner. Hard work makes you a better version of yourself, and I learned that firsthand. I became much calmer and humbler. However, we hardly had enough money to survive. We lived only off what I earned. Having a plumbing emergency could be a disaster, as plumbing services cost what I made in like three or four days. My sisters still went to school. Lolly was seven, Diana was eight. My sweet little girls just couldn't let them be in need of anything, ever. I no longer dreamed of becoming an artist. All I wanted was to grow up as soon as possible, to be able to make even more money. This became my purpose in life. I gave all the earnings to my mom. I started blaming myself for working too little. My mom did so too. Yes, she loved only my sisters. I knew that. But I was the man of the house. I was 13, and I had to support my family. I often used to play cards with Uncle Alfred, and this was my escape. It helped me get distracted, at least for a short while. I enjoyed listening to Uncle Alfred's exciting stories about the time when he worked as a sailor. He started as a cabin boy, but then became a ship captain. Those stories inspired me a lot. Uncle Alfred had a dream, too. He always wanted to have children of his own. He happened to have no wife and kids. He worked his entire life, and I respected him a lot for that. One day, Uncle Alfred didn't show up at work but that didn't alarm me at all. Even though he was absent for the first time in the eight months I worked for him, 
I realized he must have been busy. Uncle Alfred was an important figure in our town. After all, he was the owner of the only pastry shop in town. I finished my shift, and as usual proceeded with washing the dishes piled up throughout the day. At 11pm, it was time to close the shop, but I had no keys. For the first time, I called Uncle Alfred's mobile. He preferred talking in person, rather than over the phone. I heard his distressed voice, and realized he was very sick. Uncle Alfred didn't say a word about himself. All he was talking about was his pastry shop. I waited for Uncle Alfred at the hospital until 2 in the morning. Eventually, he was fine. When he was discharged, he came up to me and hugged me in a fatherly way. I can't put into words how happy I was to see him alive and well. Uncle Alfred gave me a bigger hug and said, I'm too old already, and I think you can be a great pastry chef. What? Uncle Alfred was about to retire? Next day, he gave me the keys from the pastry shop and asked me to work even harder than he did. Uncle Alfred left, and I worked like mad all day. Our pastry shop became the best, not only in our town, but in the entire state. I hired ordinary boys, and we made the perfect muffins. Uncle Alfred was pleased with me. My family is no longer desperate for money. My little sisters wear the nicest dresses, and I often pamper them. Mom is very proud of me. I'm 13, and I run the pastry shop Uncle Alfred left me. Sometimes, I think that my family would have been doomed if it hadn't been for him. Thanks for giving me a listen. If you happen to be in the area, make sure to pop into my pastry shop.